This podcast will go over the basics of implementing access control lists uh, on Cisco routers um, in order to effectively uh, apply access control lists. You need to understand two things. Uh, one of those things is how to actually write an access control list uh, to match the traffic that you want to allow or disallow. The other thing you need to understand is the traffic flow within your network so you can apply the uh, interfaces appropriately, apply the access list appropriately uh, to filter that traffic. And you need to know what the traffic is going to look like as it crosses the interface so you can let that traffic in that you want to be letting in. I did say you will let the traffic in you want to let in because the default action of an access control list is to not deny the traffic. So if it does not match an entry uh, to be permitted, it will be denied uh, by default. So we will uh, go through the steps to make this little network work. Um, first thing we want to do is verify that what we want to work does work. So in this little network, this is representing my client, PC0. Uh, here's an internal web server. Essentially, it's kind of like in a DMZ. Here's what the server we're using for DNS. And then there's another web server out here to represent an external web server. And then I have a PC out here to represent an external uh, web client. So from this PC, PC0, I should be able to connect to this web server. And I should be able to connect to that web server. Uh, this web server, here, let me change the name of these guys. This web server is RITB. Dot com and this web server is www.citnb.com and my w got messed up so i should be able to get to www.ritb.com since for rich is the best that works i should also be able to get to https rich is the best that worked and I should be able to get to www.citnb.com that stands for Cody is not the best Cody is I spelled it backwards in TB Cody is not the best uh, and then HTTPS should work as well so that works I have no access control list on my router so everything works as it should be so the first thing we're going to do is put in an access control list to control outbound traffic for PC0. When you are considering where to put access control lists, you have to consider which interface you want to put it on and in which direction because you have to apply an access control list to an interface and a direction. Uh, ETH0 slash 0 slash 0 is this interface of the traffic coming from my LAN. Uh, FA01 is the interface going out to the internet, if you will, and then FA00 is going to my DMZ. So if I want to filter traffic from PC0, I have a couple different choices depending on which traffic I want to filter. If I want to filter traffic going to the internet, I can either filter on ETH000 in the inbound direction, or I can filter on FA01 in the outbound direction. If I want to filter traffic going to the DMZ, then I can filter on uh, ETH000 in the inbound direction or I can filter on ETH FA00 in the outbound direction. Generally speaking it's probably best to filter as close to the source as possible so I will fill, I'm will i going to filter on this incoming interface. The benefit of that is I don't let packets in that my router has to process that I didn't drop later on. So if I was dropping outbound traffic on this interface I would process all that traffic by my router before I would drop it. So I'm going to put it on this interface. So first thing we need to do is get into the router interface. We're going to create some access control lists. An access control list uh, is a, a list of these uh, ACL entries that we're going to create to permit the specified traffic. So there are a couple different kinds of uh, access control lists. There's standard access control list and extended access control list. Uh, standard access control lists only let you filter based on source IP address or network. Uh, extended let you filter on all kinds of other stuff. So we're almost always going to do extended access control lists when we're attempting to filter traffic. So I'm going to create an extended access control list. So I started the command there, IP access list extended. Can I make this bigger? IP access control list extended. 
You can do named or numbered ACLs. I'm going to do numbered ACLs for now. Uh, and then, uh, that's not the right syntax I was going to do. I was going to start out with just access lists. There's a couple different ways you can create access lists depending on what version of iOS you have. This is the most standard, I shouldn't say the most standard way. This is the original way uh, where you create a list entry by entry. So I have access list 101, and then you have the action you want to put deny. If you want to, if you want to reject a specific packet, you put deny. If you want to permit packets that match that ACL, you put permit. And if you just want to put a comment, you can use the remark keyword. Uh, the pretty much the normal syntax for doing this or the normal method for doing this is you put a bunch of permits in there to allow the traffic you want to come through and then you put a deny to drop uh, anything you don't want to come through at the end or it will be dropped by default because the default action is a deny. So I'm going to permit a TCP uh, is the protocol I want to permit and then the next thing you need to specify is the source IP addresses you want to permit from. If you look at my little network down here, my LAN is 192.168.200.0 slash 24. So I'm going to put uh, that network address. And I need this wildcard mask to match that. And then I'm going to permit it to any because I'm letting it go out to the internet. For internet traffic, you're going to permit anything. If I wanted to be very specific, I could put this single IP address of this uh, server, but I'm not going to do that because I'm simulating writing a, a ACL that would filter outbound web traffic. And then I'm going to specify the protocol EQ. I don't like that thing that's sticking up. Go away. Oh well. I guess that's not going to go away. It's pretty annoying to me, the little thing that's sticking up there. And I'm going to let port 80 out. All right, I'm also going to let port 443 out, which is for uh, secure web traffic. So I've created my access list to let port 80 and port 443 out. And now I need to uh, do one other thing, which was, like I said, I need to apply it to an interface in a direction. So this uh, router, I'm going to apply it to ETH000 in the inbound direction. So I need to go into the interface config. And I apply the access list, IP access group 101. You put the number or the name and then the direction. So this means uh, packets coming into this interface will be checked against this access list. So now I'm going to try to access the stuff I should be able to access and see what happens. So I should be able to access richisthebest.com. And it's not working. Weird. I'm waiting to see if it's going to give me an error message. I'm, I already know what the problem is. I just did this uh, on purpose. The problem is my DNS requests can't make it to my DNS server. So I need to add another access control list to let DNS traffic through. And DNS is UDP. So now I'll let UDP traffic out over port 53. And hey, I can get to my web server. So um, that worked. If I put my HTTPS in, that worked. How do you know it worked? I don't know. It would have given us an error if it didn't work. Here, I'll uh, kill this little browser window so we can try again. All right, so that was the first part, uh, adding rules to let our outbound traffic through. So I added here to let DNS out and to let web traffic out. So that was good for that. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to control uh, inbound traffic from the Internet. And for that, we're going to use this PC out here. And this PC is going to try to connect to richesthebest.com. So as of right now, it should work because we only filtered so far on this interface that this traffic doesn't need to go through. Well, and what do I mean by that? Well, when I get to from this external client to my web server, it's going to go through this interface and through that interface, so it shouldn't be filtered at all. So this should still work. And it does. So we're going to go about the, much 
of the same exercise, except we're going to create a new access control list. We'll do show run first to show you how the access control list shows up. So here's how my access control list shows up in the uh, interface. Here's my access group in uh, 101 in command to apply it to the interface. So now I'm going to create a new access control list to allow the traffic from the outside in. So I'm going to go about this differently. I've already created the access control list in a text editor. This is something a lot of people do. They write their, their ACLs in the text editor. Uh, it's a lot easier. I don't know if you remember when I was writing the commands. I used the up arrow key and that was fine if you have a lot of stuff that uh, that's similar, you can use the up arrow keys and change it. But in this case, I'm going to, uh, I've already edited the ACLs in the access control, in the text editor. So here I'm creating list 102. I'm letting TCP from any source into this specific host. This is my web server host. Dot .80 is the web server. Dot .80, dot .53 is the DNS server, right? So I'm letting anything into the web server over 80 and 443, and I'm letting the DNS in over 53. And I don't really like that order, so I'm gonna move this move this line up so it's next to the what the heck next to the uh, list. So now I'm gonna copy these lines. I'll copy these lines and paste them into my router interface. All right, look at my running config. Now I have my access control list lines for 102. Now I'll try this. And, oh wait, I gotta put it in there. And it works, great. We're done, right? Wrong. It works because we're still not filtering. I did that on purpose, right? We have to apply the access control list to an interface in a direction which we didn't do. So it's real easy if you don't test a negative case. Uh, to make sure sure uh, things are working that, that they might work when they shouldn't. So what I mean by test the negative case, I mean you should test something that should not be permitted and see if it still works. Like, let's see if Telnet's running on my server. Hello? Let's see. Hmm, Telnet server? FTP's on. So let's go try to FTP to my server and see what happens. Uh, what was the IP? 200. Oh, so it, it actually let me FTP. So that's how I would know that the, the rule wasn't working because I didn't allow FTP. So now I'm going to apply it to the interface. I'm going to apply it on this interface, FA01. So int FA, FA01, apply the access list 102 in the inbound direction. So now we'll go test it. And that still works, so let's go make sure that FTP doesn't work. All right, now it's not able to connect to FTP. So that tells me my access list is doing what I expect it to be doing, at least partially. The other thing we need to worry about, which you might not have considered, is did my other thing still work? A big thing with filtering is sometimes your filtering has unintended consequences. So the, the traffic for our PC here goes out through this interface we just applied the ACL on. So the question is, is that traffic going to make it back in or not? So let's go ahead and try. That's going to work. Rich is the best .com is going to work because we're going to the DMZ. So that still works to the DMZ. Now let's try getting out to the internet. And trying to get to Cody is not the best, is uh, kind of not working that well, so timed out. So what we need to do 
is we look at this list we created, we're letting we're only letting in traffic going to this specific server over this specific port. So our return traffic is getting dropped. So I've actually already constructed some ACLs that will uh, let our return traffic back in. If we look at this, this says permit uh, TCP any EQ dub dub dub, which basically means any traffic that has a source port of 80 going to this LAN subnet and it is an established session. So what that means is the routers kept track of a three-way handshake that's already happened. Uh, why is the source port 80? Well, you should remember from, from other things we've done uh, that when the traffic goes out, the destination port for web traffic will be 80 or 443, and the traffic that comes back from the web server, the source port on that will be 80 or 443 because the ports always have to match up. So if you connect to port 80 as the destination port, uh, the return traffic will be uh, from port 80. So here's my two lists to fix it. Go ahead and copy these guys. And go back and apply it to my router. And now, in theory, going out. Should work. Oh, there we go. So now I can get out on all the ports that I wanted to be able to get out on. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I really want to go over in this podcast. Uh, get, get all that working. And it works now. So great. Fantastic.